2021 edition of the Istanbul Half Marathon. Out of a run, out of hundreds of half, Yasemin Jan, Ruth Chepengetic, Yalam Zev Yehulal, Fatma Arik, Ayla Saeed Mohamed, Bushra Koku, Melat Kajeta, and others to look forward to. And on the women's side, we continue with the name Stella Ruto, who won't get the key done, Becca Lechkudeta, Daisy Kemeli, Sofia Yaramchuk, Helen Obiri, and the Turkish athletes Esma Aydemir, and so on. And on the men's, we have two big names, Kipuot Kandi and Jeffrey Kamawar. To look forward to, you have Amdawar Gwalalein, the former winner and track record holder, and many other names. And we'll continue at the bottom with the Turkish names to look forward to. Morag Emektar, Cesar Karatekin, Deniz Aydoğan, Emre Akın, John Yalaman, and Ali Arslan. Now, if we can go to the start finish line, it's waiting to start. And here's the countdown. as you can see right here. That's exactly what's happening at the 6th edition of the Istanbul Half Marathon. Now, a little break from the rain here in Istanbul. Not the best conditions, but as you'll see in the next couple of hours, the runners will be going through the best sites in one of the best countries, in one of the best cities in Europe. Now, there are mouth-watering matchups on hand in both the men's and women's races. And kudos to the Istanbul Metropolitan Municip Municipality and Sports Istanbul for putting this thing together as the fields are incredible. Initially, Kenyan stars Kipuot Kandi and Jeffrey Kamborar were supposed to square off at the Ras Al Khaimah Half Marathon in the United Arab Emirates on February 19th. That race was ultimately canceled, and you can probably guess why, because of COVID-19. But the Kandi Kamborar matchup is back on in Istanbul on this rainy Istanbul Sunday, as Kamborar will get the chance to take on the man who broke his half marathon world record in Valencia in December in the dying days of 2020. Now, on the women's side, which we'll see in a little bit, as you can see right there, Ababel Yashane's one hour, four minute, and 31 second world record is in danger, no matter what the conditions are right now. Yashane isn't running here in Istanbul, but pretty much every other relevant women's half marathoner is. Two of the medalists from October's world half marathon champs are here, Germany's Melat Kajeta and Ethiopia's Elam you out of plus marathon world record holder Bridget Koski, marathon world champ Ruth Chepengetic, and the half marathon debut of two time 5,000 meters world champion Helen Obiri. As you can see, the conditions aren't necessarily the best. The roads, because this is a road half marathon on asphalt, roads can be a little slippier. Not as slippery as for these runners in the early uh, hours of the morning here around 8 o'clock, uh, 15 past 8. We had roller skaters go out and uh, do their own 10K race. And uh, in the first couple of minutes, you had people falling down, slipping, uh, hurting themselves a little bit. But, you know, just despite the runners having more control, obviously, uh, they probably won't, go, won't be going as fast due to the slippery road and the conditions. 
Now, on the men's side, let's look at the uh, biggest names who will threaten to win the race. Now, the biggest question is, will Kamara get his revenge? It was, it was good to be Jeffrey Kamara in the 2010s. No one can doubt that. Bursting onto the scene with a win in the junior race at the World Cross Country Championships in 2011. Kamara starred for much of the decade, racking up two senior World Cross Championships titles, two New York City Marathon titles, three World Half Marathon titles, and a 58-minute, one-second half marathon world record. He was the guy to beat for a very, very very long time. No surprise in that. The 2020s, meanwhile, have not been as kind, unfortunately. First, the pandemic hit, which was unlucky for everyone. But in June last year, Kamara was hit by a motorcycle, yes, by a motorcycle, while training. The same kinds of motorcycles you can see uh, watching the runners right here. Um, he sustained head and leg injuries that required surgery and crutches. The worst possible situation for a runner, obviously. That accident sidelined him for the fall season in the Northern Hemisphere, during which time he had to watch Uganda's Jacob Kiplimo take his world half marathon title and Candy, the man he's racing today, yes that's his country in Cuba with Candy, take his world record with a stunning 57 minute 32 second time in Valencia that's almost that's almost a half minute which is crazy um, in fact, that race in Spain was so fast that Camorra got bumped all the way down to number five on the all-time list. Maybe athletics are seeing a golden age in form, or technology, like the Nike Vaporfly shoes. You know, they might be having a, an effect finally. We just have to see how much that affects things today. Now, Camorra finally returned with a win at the Kenyan Police Cost Crunch Champs on January 29th. That set the stage for the Kenyan Champions two weeks later and a shot at Rip the Edge against Candy. Now, as you can remember, who upset Kamara at the same race in 2020? If you're a big uh, marathon fan or a half marathon fan. Instead, Kamara dropped out on a muddy day in Nairobi. So the big question remains, can Kamara, who's targeting the Olympic 10,000 meters race this year, get back to his best? Or is Candy usurped his crown as the man to beat in the half marathon? Me, personally, I cannot wait to find out who comes out on top. Now, let's look at our official times right now. Now, the first kilometer split was at 2 minutes and 46 seconds. And now, the split as uh, the second kilometer split is at 5 minutes and 37 seconds. So, between the first and second kilometer, the runners have gone just a bit slower. But we'll just have to wait and see who comes out on top. Now, as far as I can tell, currently we have Bernard and Diego in the front on the men's side. On the women's side, we can't really tell right now, but it's still the early stages of the race. Now let's talk a little bit about the women's side. Or no, no let's, let's go back to the men's side, because we do have a little bit of uh, unfinished questions to answer here. Now, Kamwara finally returned with a win at the Kenyan Police Cross Country Champs. But, as, as I've said before, we can't find, uh, wait to find out who will go out on top. Now, Candy and Kamwara are the undisputed big dogs in today's race. But there are a couple of other sub-59 minute men in the field. In uh, Amdawar Gwalegan of Ethiopia, who has a track record here in Istanbul for the men's. And Steven Kissa of Uganda. A time in the 5850s isn't what it used to be now that the world record is a whopping 57 minutes and 32 seconds, but it's still very solid running. Let's make that known.
Walelin, in particular, bears watching as he was third in the world half in October, 13 seconds ahead of 5K, 10K world record holder Joshua Cheptege. Kisa, who trains with Cheptege in Kapchorwa in Uganda, is only three seconds back of Walelin in New Delhi a month later. So, if we had to predict how things will turn out in the men's, it, it kind of feels sacrilegious to pick against Kumwar, considering the degree to which he's dominated the half marathon. Six wins in his last seven races. Yes, six wins in his last seven races. You did not hear that wrong. That includes three world titles. But the thing is... Four of those wins came in 2014, seven years ago. Can you believe that? Seven years ago. In the last six years, he's raced just three half marathons. And while they were all brilliant, you know, the 2016 World Half, 2018 World Half Championships, the 2019 Copenhagen uh, World Record win that he, that he had, he's yet to show he's back to form following his motorcycle accident last year. As you can see, we're going across the one of the oldest parts of Istanbul. As you can see, the walls right there, dating back to Byzantium times, I believe. And despite today's uh, race day, you can still see a little bit of traffic here and there. But don't worry, it's all race related, mostly. Now, if we continue on the men's side, uh, keep it what can do. What an incredible guy right now. He became the first man in history to break the 59-minute wall four times in one year. And that was in 2020. Going 58-58 at the Raz al Khaime, 58-38 at Prague, uh, a 57-32 at Valencia. All three of these he won, by the way. He went second at the World Half Championships, going uh, with a 58-minute, 54-second time, I believe. And it was a season for the ages. You know, he was also a respectable second at this year's Kenyan Cost Crunchy Champs, just two seconds behind winner Rogers came with, uh, Rogers Quim. So it's, it's, I mean, you could say it's still in good form. Now, Kamor is only 28 years old and should have plenty of good years ahead of him if he can get, if he can get back to full fitness. But Candy, who's a full four years younger, and for people who follow sports, know that is a very big difference. He's a more reliable option right now. So we'll go with him. That is our candidate to win. Now, as you can see, the women are lagging a bit behind the men. But it's still an exciting race. Back here at the start and finish line, you can still see people getting ready to start their 21K races. Meanwhile, the elite runners are already up in front. With four kilometers done and dusted, their time is at 11 and 17. As you can see on the screen right now, we're getting close to 12 minutes. And their lap times have been relatively similar. The first lap finishing in 2 minutes 46 seconds. The second lap finishing in 2 minutes 51 seconds. Third lap is 2 minutes 52 seconds. And the fourth that just ended right now was 2 minutes 48 seconds. Now, with these times, you can expect the projected pace to be, again, a uh, sub-one-hour time with uh, around 59 minutes and 32 seconds to be estimated. Now, here at the start-finish time, as you just saw, people were still getting their races on. Now, let's talk a little bit about the women's race. And the biggest question before this event was, will the world record go down? But now, uh, as you can see, with the condition, 
conditions, it's looking a little tougher by the minute. <coughs> Excuse me. And the reason is, as you can see, the rain. Now, the talent in this race, the reason why we asked, will the world record go down? It's because this race is somehow even better than the men's. You know, over there, we're expecting a candy come roar kind of battle towards the end. But here on the women's, between Helen O'Beary, Luth Chepengetic, and Bridget Koske, you have the planet's most dominant 5,000 half marathon and marathon runners meeting at a middle distance. Now, while the 21K is a crossover event for O'Beary and Koske, at least right now, the half marathon belongs to Perez Chepchuchu. There's one thing, though. She's not here this year. She pulled out at the last minute with a stomach issue, I believe. That was what we were told, at least. Now, putting those names aside, we haven't even talked about the fastest as marathoner that is here in Istanbul on the women's side. And that would be world half bronze medalist Yalem Zerif Yehualov, who clocked the number two time in history by running a one hour, four minute and 46 seconds to win in New Delhi in November. Now, Koske is next with a 1 hour, 4 minute, 49 personal best from Raza Khamei last year. Followed by John Chilimo Meli, Ruth Chepengetic, and World Half Silver medalist Melat Kejeta. That is some field, ladies and gentlemen. Now, as you can see on the right, there are some men tangled in uh, with the women, with the elite women runners. But that only goes to show you how dominant they're set to be. Now, obviously, when you get a race with that, that many talented women, world record, as we said at top, uh, world record is the natural thought. But can we can we just appreciate this event for what it is? You know, a top-notch race. And like I said, we cannot thank the Istanbul municipality and Sports Istanbul for putting this together. Now, imagine like this, you know, pitting the best athletes from a variety of distances don't come around very often and won't be as common once track season begins this summer and marathons resume this fall. And no, I mean, there isn't a world title on the line or anything like that, but the battle for the win here is more compelling than a world record chase. Let me say that again. The win here is more compelling than a world record chase, especially given how common world records have become recently. You have all these talented women, and uh, we're, we're hoping a record will come, will come across. And as you just saw right there, on the men's side, they're getting, they're, they're, they're even running faster than the following cars, which, and the motorcycle as you can see there, which is quite remarkable really in these kind of conditions. Now, the runners are going through the Galatza Bridge. And let me give you a little info on the Galatza Bridge. Now, in a city that's known for their bridges, especially the Bosphorus Bridge, now the July 15th Martyrs Bridge, um, the Galata Bridge was actually one of the most famous bridges back in the time in Istanbul. It right now, I think, is the fifth edition of the bridge. Um, and in, in past times, uh, this bridge was especially important um, for Istanbul. It bridged together the ruling side of Istanbul in the Ottoman Empire and the district of Galata, where a lot of uh, non-Muslim uh, citizens look from the Galata Tower right now. The first you turn in the 21K race. Now, if we had to talk about the Galata Tower a little bit, it was uh, made by the Genoese. You know, it was a medieval stone tower in the Galata Karakoy quarter of Istanbul, just to the north of the Golden Horn. As you can see right now, the men did a right turn on the Golden Horn and are going towards the Golden Horn. As you can see, that is a metro bridge built a couple years ago, another one of the signature bridges in Istanbul. Not quite Pittsburgh, you know, the city of bridges in the U.S., but we still have a fair amount of our big iconic bridges.
There you have it. Other runners for the 21K. Now, we have to remember that the course is the same for everyone, but each journey to the finish line is unique to each and every participant. From the elite runners that are almost halfway right now to the runners at the start-finish line who have just gotten off to do their race. Uh, different reasons for everyone to race. You know, there will certainly be a myriad of stories to tell afterwards, but they'll be, ex you know, they'll be celebrated for their endeavors and a spectacle that I think we're all absorbed by every single year. Now, these runners have had their fair share of glory around the world, but some first-time runners are about to experience possibly the best moment of their lives, finishing a 21K race. It's, it's, it's incredible to think about that, you know, especially if you're a normal everyday person going to work, going home, and just doing that routine. 21K is an incredible journey. Obviously, when you're in that kind of mindset, you don't really realize how big it is. And it's probably the same for Bernard Nego right now, up in front. Let's talk a little bit about the race. Now, this event, the Istanbul Half Marathon, was established in 1987 under the name Halic Half Marathon, the Golden Horn Half Marathon to be more exact, and it continued to run until 1993. Now, it took a break for 17 years. It was revived back in 2010 under the name of the International Golden Horn Half Marathon. And there was quite a lot of participation with around 1,500 athletes from around 20 nations, 22 to be exact. Now, the organization of the half marathon took a four-year break until 2015 when the Istanbul Metropolitan Municipality reestablished the road running event under the name Istanbul Half Marathon. The first edition immediately attracted high caliber elite runners, uh, very similar to the ones we can see right now with the incredible drum footage the uh, broadcast is providing. And that resulted in quick winning times of around one hour in the men's category and one hour six minutes in the women's race. Now, the, the event was uh, organized by Istanbul Sports Events, the organizer of the long-running Istanbul Marathon event. The half-marathon course begins and ends in Yenikopa this year, uh, following the route south to the seafront area, which we're going through right now. As you can see on the left, you have the Golden Horn, one of the more popular places in the uh, European side of Istanbul. And uh, before this race started, there was actually a 10K run that was hosted for amateur runners. Now, the 2016 edition of this race gained a World Athletics Bronze Label status, and the field included world record breakers at the time, uh, like Zersenay Tadese and Leonard Patrick Coman. That year, in 2016, the event was staged on the same weekend as the Presidential Cycling Tour of Turkey. So. As you can understand, sports in Turkey are very, very big. In a couple of months' time, actually, we're going to have one of the biggest football events in the world, the Champions League final at the Ataturk Olympic Stadium in uh, towards the end of May. So sports in Istanbul are like peanut butter and jelly, you know? You can't replace it. It's the best thing ever. And uh, every once in a while, we have big events like these. And because of the Istanbul Marathon's popularity, in December 2016, it was announced that the event was promoted to a World Athletics Gold Label status. And from 2017 on, that's been the same. Now let's look at the times right now.
Now the runners are close to the nine kilometer mark, almost halfway there, and their lap times are getting a bit slower. For the males, uh, their latest lap time for the eight kilometer was three minutes and 11 seconds, with their total time being 23 minutes. Now let's talk a little a bit about the psychology behind marathons. Now, as you can see right now at the start finish line, if my colleagues in the booth will show, uh, we had a lot of 21K runners getting ready and cheering themselves on to start the race. reason a lot of people are starting later, about 26 minutes later, is because of the COVID-19 pandemic. A lot of rules have been set in place so people can run in a very healthy and safe way. One of those rules are five people at once, no more than five people, with close to five, ten seconds in between each batch, so people can uh, socially distance themselves from other racers, other runners. As you can see right there, the beautiful Istanbul skyline. Now that is the ecumenical Orthodox Patriarchy. Uh, as you can see there, it is quite in the middle of Istanbul. Not a lot of people know that. You know, it's one of the 14 to 16 autocephalous churches that together compose the Eastern Orthodox Church. And it's headed by the ecumenical Patriarchy of Istanbul. It's currently Bartholomew I. Archbishop of Istanbul. Now, right now, you see Bernard Kipkoringego quite in front for the men's, racing his way. On the woman's side, you still have a close pack, so who knows what will happen in the next half hour. But if we look at the times. Because of the rain, the racers aren't going that fast. Their latest lap time was a three minute and seven second uh, time. Now let's talk a little bit about what a half marathon actually is. It's quite easy to say it's <laughs> literally the half of a marathon, which is 42 kilometers. You know, quick maths, that's 21 kilometers for the half marathon. You know, it's, it's common for a half marathon event to be held concurrently with a marathon or a 5K race. But for this one in Istanbul, it's a whole different event. You know, if finisher medals are awarded, the medal or ribbon may differ from those for the full marathon, as it obviously does for this race. Uh, the half marathon is also known as the 21K, although these values are rounded and not firmly correct. So if we, again, do the maths, uh, the half of what a marathon distance is is 21.0975 kilometers. Does it really matter? No. In the end, everyone's running. Everyone's trying to be patient. Everyone's trying to forget their legs, their uh, their arms, their feet are hurting. And, uh, yeah, it's a event for everyone. As we said, in the men's, the world record is, uh, the world record goes to Kibiwat Kandi, who's here at Istanbul. And for the women's, that's Bridget Kroske, who's also in Istanbul. So that kind of shows you how big this Istanbul Half Marathon event is, especially in the kind of uh, point of view of, um, of a pandemic. Now, last year, if you remember, the Formula One race in Turkey, the Turkish Grand Prix, uh, had come back to Istanbul after almost a decade, and it was supposed to have fans, about 100,000 fans as well. And that was really, really exciting for not only people here in Istanbul, but for the drivers as well. But unfortunately, we didn't get to see that because of COVID-19. 
but good on the Istanbul municipality and the Sports Istanbul to put on an event like this. Now, after 10 kilometers, as you can see, uh, Keep It With Candy is going in first. Jeffrey Kamura, his biggest rival, is in second. Underwork Kualing In, who used to who is a former winner, is third. Leonard Barsoton, Aras Kayas, and Steven Kisa follow. And as you can see right there, the, the runners were forced to go across a mat on the, on the road. And that's because the runners have chips uh, on their shirts, which can electronically tell the exact time they're going. And on the left right there, you saw a water stand. Now it's very, 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 very important to hydrate. It's actually one of the most important things um, to do in a, in, in, a, uh, in a half marathon or a marathon or any race, in fact. Now let's take a look at the times once again. With 10 kilometers gone, the pace is around 59 minutes and 56 seconds, the projected pace that the runners will finish. It's not a world record like we were talking about, you know, especially when there are elite runners uh, in, in the run. But that's still something. Now we have the 11 kilometer times. The split is currently at 31 minutes and 19 seconds, with the most recent lap time being 2 minutes and 55 seconds. Maybe that kind of uh, distraction to go on top of the blue mat may have had something to do with it. We don't know. And the projected pace is at 1 hour and 5 seconds. Like I said, not too fast, but it's still incredible to see these elite athletes compete with each other. Now let's talk a little bit about the race, just a bit more. On the right, right there, you can see the women passing our camera. And on the left, you still have Bernard Ingego trying to be the pacemaker of the race. Now, you could say, and this is not speculative at all, you could say with the strongest field ever assembled in the race's 16-year history, it would not be over-optimistic to expect that one or two records could tumble at the Nikolai Istanbul Half Marathon. But, and this is a big but, uh, the weather conditions aren't really helping that. Now, even though several other stars will line up on the day, the spotlight will be on the duel between the reigning World Half Marathon record holder, Kibi Walt Candy, and his predecessor, Jeffrey Kamurar. Having run under 59 minutes in his three outings over the distance earlier on in 2020, which is last year, Candy ended the year on an even higher note by clocking a world record time of 57 seven minutes and 32 seconds as i mentioned earlier and that was in valencia now kamoro who set the previous record of 58 minutes and one second that's almost 30 seconds slower quick maths in copenhagen in september 2019 was out of action at the time as he was recovering from surgery after he was hit by a motorcycle in june last year and that for a runner takes a big toll you know you're you're losing your ability to run maybe train every day which these runners absolutely do now he returned Kamura returned to the course two months ago at the Kenya Police Service Championships where he bagged his eighth successive title now both Kenyans could run well under the race record of 59 minutes and 50 seconds held by uh, Amderwark uh, Walalane of Ethiopia who's in the running I believe he's around six right now but as I've mentioned earlier, the projected time is about one hour right now after the 12 kilometer mark. Now, Walla Lane, who won in Istanbul in 2018, is himself one of the contenders. The 22-year-old ranked the top Ethiopian when finishing third in his then personal best of 59 minutes and 8 seconds at the World Athletics Half Marathon Championships last year. Walla Lane then improved his personal best to 58 minutes and 53 seconds in New Delhi, and that was in November. The Istanbul Half Marathon will be Walla Lane's first race since, and he'll be one of the favorites to step on the podium but we still have about 20 or more minutes to see that 
Now another sub-59 minute runner on the start line was Steven Kissa, who's also in the running. He's, I believe, in the top 10 right now. Now, the Ugandan had never run a half marathon until February 2020 of last year when he made his debut in Barcelona with a time of one hour on the dot. Kissa crossed the finish line in one hour, 34 seconds at the World Athletics Half Marathon Championships. He then went on to achieve a personal best in New Delhi. And that was with a 58 minute, 56 time in what was only his third appearance in the distance. Now, if, if you know athletics, you realize that runners get ready for races way ahead of time. They have to acclimatize to the weather. Uh, I'm sure these runners were well aware that it could rain, so they were very, very ready. So. You know, running only his third half marathon, and now this is his fourth, I believe. No, th this is his third appearance. It's it's going to be tough for Stephen Kissa. Also, um, as you can see right there, we have the Golden Horn Bridge, one of the iconic, one of the other iconic bridges on the Golden Horn. Almost at the 40 minute mark. Now, these three bridges the Galata Bridge, the Unkapana Bridge, and the Halish Bridge used to be the three biggest bridges in Istanbul. Now we have the Bosphorus Bridge, we have the Fatih Sultan Mehmet Bridge, and we have the third bridge, as it's called. Now, if we had to get back to the runners, as you can see right there, uh, they're going on a fairly normal pace, quick for this kind of uh, condition, with rain and wind and a little bit cold. Now, hopes are high that the competition will result in world-breaking numbers. But as I've said in the top and many times after, the rain and wind and cold, I don't know if that'll happen today. The runners running in unison. Now, normally in marathons, you see runners uh, going about in a very Peloton-esque way with with pacers and all that but uh because of the COVID-19 pandemic you don't really see that in today's uh marathon and while on the women's side you see a couple of the men's paving the way for the women kind of breaking the wind being a little more aerodynamic for them on the right hand side and on the left-hand side, you can see the men's running through the streets of Istanbul. Now, for a city that has a 16 million population, these are scenes you do not see. Normally, these streets, these avenues, would be packed with cars, either trying to get home or work, or to their local store. Now, let's talk a little bit about the women's side. Now, Kenya's Bridget Koske, the marathon world record holder, will face Yalan Zef Yehula of Ethiopia, the second fastest female half marathon runner in history. Koske herself is the third athlete on the half marathon all-time list, so big, big names in Istanbul on Sunday. However, the 27-year-old holds the fastest time ever registered with a one-hour, four-minute, and 28-second time, but on a non-record eligible course at the Great North Run in 2019, which was a point-to-point -point race. Now, both Koske and Yehulao achieved their official personal best in 2020 which were a 1 hour, 4 minute, 46 second time and a 1 hour and 4 minute, 49 second time, respectively. 
marathon days, half marathon days in Istanbul are cherished a lot by Istanbul lights. Now this year, uh, for the Istanbul half marathon, there was a uh, cap at, I believe, around 4,000 runners for the whole event. That includes the 10K run, the roller skates run, and the 21K run. So not a lot of people on the roads, but still enough to constitute a cool day in Istanbul. Normally, with, with the chance to walk on the streets that are normally filled with cars, Istanbul lights would flood these kind of races, you know, with, for the uh, Istanbul Marathon that happens in uh, late 2020, late, later in the year. You see, you could have seen like a sea of people on the bridge, on the Bosphorus Bridge. Now, on the left-hand side, you have the Spice Bazaar right there. And in Turkish, it's actually called the uh, Mısır Çarşı, as you can see, which if you translate it directly, it can translate as the Corn Pazar, but it's not. You can translate that as the Egyptian Pazar. Bazaar. The reason is, uh, when it was built or rebuilt, it was actually built with money that came from the state of Egypt in the Ottoman times. So that's why it's called the Mısır Çarşı, which is the Egyptian bazaar. But now, internationally, it's known more as the Spice Bazaar. And actually, the mosque you see there in the background, it's called the New Mosque. The first name of the Spice Bazaar back in Ottoman times was actually the New Bazaar, you know, in conjunction with the mosque right next to it. But now things are different, obviously. Spice Bazaar is more uh, marketable, I guess, for people coming from abroad and wanting to buy every kind of spice they can think of. Now we're watching the woman's side. Yes, that is the women's side, don't get fooled. The men running in front of them are part of the elite runners for the men, but they're, they're working as, they're running as pacemakers right now for the women. Now let's talk a little bit about half marathons and how to get ready for them. For someone who wants to run a half marathon like the Istanbul Half Marathon, you know, <laughs> take off a bucket list item for themselves running in a city as beautiful as Istanbul. Oh, well, now the runners, the men's side are going past another blue mat, so we'll check the times. Right now, the men are on the 15th kilometer. They just finished their 15th kilometer. So getting very close to the 21st and the end, the finish, uh, their time right now is at 42.55 at the 15 kilometers. Their last kilometer time was at 2 minutes and 56 seconds. And they're projected to finish around 1 hour and 22 seconds. So, like I said, not exactly the world record time we were expecting. But it's still, nonetheless, really, really incredibly exciting to see elite athletes do their best in the streets of this sample. So let's get back to talking about half marathons. So drinking water or being staying hydrated is extremely important. You need to drink before, during, and after you run to perform your best. Obviously, dehydration is a major problem, one that runners don't really realize until they're, you know, at the end or finished. So indeed, just 2% dehydration can slow you down. Having enough water is very, very important. Important. It's especially important to stay on top of hydration during warm summer months, which we're not really going through right now. But, you know, when you sweat more, it's kind of a problem for runners. They don't get to have enough energy. They don't get to be their fastest, you know, so they should stay hydrated. With rainy weather, weather like this, it's maybe less of a problem, but still very important. No. Now, while some experts recommend you to stay hydrated by simply drinking when thirsty, others suggest you develop a customized plan by performing a sweat test. And I'm sure all of these elite runners have gone through that. You know, the, what is a sweat test? I'll explain after we look at the Topkapı Palace. Now, 
Now, if you're wondering what this place is, if you do not live in Istanbul, the Topkapı Palace is a large museum now on the east of the Fatih district of Istanbul. In the 15th and 16th centuries, it served as the main residence and administrative headquarters of the Ottoman sultans. It was made by the uh, conqueror, Sultan Mehmed II, in 1459, and it finished uh, about six years after the conquest of uh, uh, Istanbul. Fourteen minutes to go until the hour mark, which is relatively the finish time of the race. It's projected to be. Now, on the right, right there, you saw a runner going for the water, and as explained just before, staying hydrated is key. Now, let's take a look at the splits, at the times. Currently, the runners are on their 17th kilometer, but on the 16th, they finished with a time of 45 seconds, 45 minutes and 41 seconds, with a lap time of two minutes and 46 seconds. So if we had to make an educated guess, their finish time would be around one hour. So very close to the finish time. themselves, trying to leave enough energy for the last stages of the race. Now, right now, they're on the return of the long straight. On the right, you can see the Marmara Sea. And if you look at the pack on the left with the men, it will be an exciting finish. Very interesting to see none of them are kind of leading the pack. So everyone's racing their own individual race without any help, without any, um, you know, distractions from the wind. No one heading up the wind. No one kind of helping the pack get through it, get through the rain. On the woman's side, it's kind of the exact opposite. You have a couple of men in the front paving the way. And that, without a doubt, makes the race a lot easier for the women. Right now, on the left right there, you can see Kevin Blood Candy and Jeffrey Kamura. Trying to finish the race on top. If you're wondering how these athletes prepare for a half marathon or a marathon, uh, the long run usually on a Saturday or Sunday, for our case it's a Sunday, is arguably the most important part of any half marathon training plan. Now, everything you're doing earlier in the week, which could be speed work, cross training, hill repeats, they're designed to prepare you for a long run. So if you do those, in a very planned fashion, you know, it's more than guaranteed that you could probably run a race like this. Now, if you can do those, uh, choose a route similar to the race you'll be running. So for a race like this one, they stumble half marathon, runners would probably try to do a very flat run as much as possible because right now we're at sea level and the only time it deviated was that run up to Galata Tower where they returned so not much of a tire uh, both ways in total you know doing or training in an environment that's you know resembles your race 
you know, that will always be possible for elite runners like these. But if you're doing a destination race, which is a point-to-point -point race, you shouldn't necessarily hit the treadmill every single day, you know, even if it's raining. Pacing is another issue that these elite runners are obviously very aware of. The most common mistake for amateur runners that you can see on the right right there is, you know, going out too fast, starting too fast, and then crashing and burning, not having enough energy left to finish the race. You know, if you've raced a couple of 5Ks, aim to run three to four minutes per mile slower on your long runs and on race day. So the, the biggest thing to remember is as long as you can go up to a 21K time or 21K run, you'll be you'll be fine. And these runners, they they do at least four to five races like these every year and for each one they train like crazy yeah as you can see right there we're getting very close towards the finish on the right hand side you have amateur running runners who've just began their race and on the left you have the women's side who are trying to finish their race they're about 10 to 15 minutes off Let's take a look at the times right now. And having just finished the 18th kilometer, it looks like we're at a 51.20 time. And the pace for at least the men's will be around one hour and 10 seconds. Now, if we had to remember the world record time for the, not the world record time, I, I apologize, the track record time for the Istanbul Half Marathon, that is around 59 seconds, 59 minutes and 50 seconds for the men's, one hour, five minutes and 30 seconds for the women. Inching ever closer to the time. Now, one thing to remember about running marathons is realizing that medals do not matter as much as you think. What's important for especially the amateur runners on the right-hand side is just finishing the race. On the left-hand side, as you can see, for both the men's and the women's, it's finishing for a personal best time. You know, they say it's the same for real life. You know, big moments like college graduations or job promotions, they feel great in the moment, but really they're just celebrations of all the work you put in behind the scenes. Those moments don't necessarily define you, you but, you know, they define how you live every day. And for running a marathon, even a half marathon, it's important to know that this isn't just about 21 kilometers. It's about all of the preparation that went in beforehand. All the long hours, the days, the blisters on your feet, the sore thighs, legs, arms, the dehydration. When you cross the finish line, it's a culmination of passing all those obstacles. And the mindset right now of the runners is more often than not, you know, one step at a time, one kilometer at a time. During a half marathon, you 
even these elite runners almost always hit a wall. You know, same goes in life. That report for work that you're so close to being done with, the last few pounds you have to lose, that project you promised your spouse would finish, I generally don't. It's tempting to give up on things that weigh you down, like agonizing pain in your feet right now that the runners are uh, probably feeling. As you can see on the men's, you have Keep It Walked Candy going out in front, behind him. Oh, I apologize. That is Felix Kumitai. Felix Kumitai was the winner. He was the winner last year, I believe. I apologize. I have my, I have my notes all bunched up. We're getting ever so closer to the finish line. Five minutes to go for this half marathon in Istanbul for the Nikolai half marathon. Now, if we look at the times, we're on. We're a little more than one kilometer off. The finish for the 19 kilometers, uh, the time was 54 minutes and 4 seconds. As you can see, the men are taking a little break from the cold wind and rain. And less than one kilometer to go. to the finish line now less than five minutes remaining for the finish of the men's and close to around eight to nine minutes for the women's side now we're watching the men's you have right there keep it what candy the world record holder up in front and behind him his arch rival his nemesis his countryman jeffrey Comoror. It all depends on what they do here in the last kilometer. And there you have it, Kiwot Kandi. Kiwot Kandi in front, Jeffrey Kamor, his arch rival, right behind him. Now let's remember, Kimi Wat Candy broke Kamal War's world record, half marathon world record, back in 2020 by almost 30 seconds. And right now he's leading the Nikolai Istanbul half marathon with less than one kilometer to go. Now, when you look at the time, it's not exactly the world record that Candy broke back in uh, 2020, the late part of 2020, which was a 57.29 time, I believe. Let me just recheck that. A 57.32 time, yes. Now, they're going slower, mostly because of the cold weather, the conditions, the air, the rain, the wind. Not exactly ideal, but that doesn't stop this race from being a very competitive one. And there you have it, the last stretch. Candy Kibawot of Kenya. Candy of Kenya. Kenya needs a miracle. And once again, there you have it. Keep it Candy continues his agonizing pace for half marathons, beating his rival Jeffrey Kamwar.
incredible race from Jeffrey Kamara as well, having suffered an accident last year after a motorcycle hit him. And this year he was right behind Jeffrey Kamara, which is a which is an incredible achievement. Keep it with Candy finishing. Let's look at his time. He finished with a 59 minute 32 second time, which is a track record for the Istanbul half marathon. He broke Ethiopia's Ahmed Amadawar Gualalain's record, which was 59 minutes and 50 seconds back in 2018. For the women's side, we are still on for a world record. If Vucep and Getic can run a little faster, she can break her own record of one hour, five minutes, and 30 seconds. Now, with the absence of uh, Jep Chichit, if anyone was listening from the start, I had predicted that Ruth Jep who knew the way around this track in Istanbul, could win it all. And right now, she's set to win it for the third time. But what we're looking for is whether if she can break her own track record. Ruth Chepengetich right there with the orange jersey. If she can run faster than four minutes, she will be breaking her own track record. asking what's going through a runner's mind right now you know everyone has watches so she's probably thinking about breaking her own record breaking her own personal best at this track now one of the most amazing lessons that marathons teach us or half marathons teach us is that while pain comes and goes like the pain chipping get is going through right now her legs her arms her feet the pride you experience from achieving such an accomplishment doesn't ever fade. And for runners like these, it's pride. It's the sense of doing the best that they can that keeps them going. You know, whether it be quitting a job and having to live on little money for a few months, like these runners have mostly done in the beginning of their careers to pursue their dreams, they're pushing their bodies to accomplish something that's very rare, finishing 21Ks in record times, at least for this track. And sometimes, for beginners at least, you just have to take the leap. And that's even true for elite athletes like Jeppen Getic. Sometimes you just have to believe in, in yourself as much as you can. You have to push through the pain and discomfort and challenge yourself. As you can see, Jeppen Getic right now... Running her fastest. Now Chepin Getich's record for this track for the Istanbul Half Marathon was at one hour, five minutes, and thirty seconds. And for this one here for the 2021 edition. She has set a new track record. One hour, four minutes. That is a full one minute and 30 seconds faster than her previous record. That's three-time champion Ruth Chepengetic right there, the winner of the 2021 Istanbul Half Marathon. What a race, what a marathon, what a half marathon. What a run by Ruth Chepengetic.
Kenyon right now is on top of the world. He's on top of Istanbul. For this event, on the women's side especially, you do not have any other repeat champions. That's That goes for the men's side as well. And get this, Ruth, it's Ruth Chipping. It's just third time. It's her third win.